Whenever I say that China is installing a lot of solar, in fact, more than the rest of the world combined, people say, well, yeah, but aren't they installing coal power plants? The air in China is terrible. But actually, that narrative isn't quite correct. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. China, their emissions has actually been they've actually been declining amid a clean energy surge. For the first time, the growth in China's clean power generation has caused the nation's carbon dioxide emissions to fall despite rapid power demand growth. Demand for power in China continues to rise as more and more electric cars get added to the grid and as more people come out of you know, poverty or, or basically lower levels of lower standards of living and they rise to the highest standards of living and they use more power. When we're talking about 1.4 billion people with many, literally hundreds of millions going through that phase, you'd think that actually China's pollution would be getting worse thanks to emissions from power plants and cars and factories. But actually, it's not. New analysis for Carbon Brief shows that China's emissions were down 1.6% year on year in the first quarter of 2025 and down by 1% in the latest 12 months. The ProgressPlaybook.com says that electricity supply from new wind, solar, and nuclear capacity was enough to cut coal power output even as demand surged, whereas previous falls were due to weak growth. The first three months of 2025 have a set a record. We have never, ever seen this before. We're looking at demand skyrocketing, and yet emissions going down. The analysis based on official figures and commercial data shows that China's CO2 emissions have now been stable or falling for more than a year. However, they remain around 1% below the latest peak, implying that any short-term jump could cause them to rise to a new record. However, at the same time, China's aging internal combustion car fleet is being replaced predominantly with hybrids, and fully electric cars. Here's some key figures. Growth in clean power generation has now overtaken the current and long-term average growth in electricity demand, pushing down fossil fuel use. China's largest oil company predicts that oil demand will fall every year, every year for the next 20 years, to the point where it's predicting that um, it's not smart to be invested in fossil fuels or oil. Power sector emissions fell by 2% year on year and in the 12 months to March 2025. So power sector emissions are falling whilst demand is skyrocketing. If this pattern is sustained, it would herald a peak and sustained decline in China's power sector emissions. And in fact, many experts are saying China's emissions have peaked and will never ever hit those record highs again. The trade war initiated by US President Donald Trump has prompted renewed efforts to shift China's economy towards domestic consumption rather than exports. And that means China wants to simply make more solar, more wind, more batteries in order to power its own grid, not have to buy coal from anyone else. A new pricing policy for renewables has caused a rush to install before it takes effect leading to a virtuous cycle. We're going to see a renewable spike in China this year. If you thought last year was an amazing year for China in terms of renewables, installing the equivalent of five nuclear power plants worth of, worth of solar, wind and batteries per week, this year will be even bigger. There is a growing gap that will need to be bridged if China is to meet the 2030 emissions targets it pledged under the Paris Agreement, but it's very possible China could hit those numbers. If sustained, in China, the drop in power sector CO2 as a result of clean energy growth could result in a structural decline in emissions anticipated in previous analysis for carbon brief. The trend of falling power sector emissions is likely to continue in 2025, but the outlook beyond that depends strongly on the clean energy and emissions targets set in China's next five-year plan due to be published next year, as well as the economic policy response to the Trump administration's hostile trade policy. But keep in mind, China is 
basically saying no to coal power plants, new ones. Approvals for coal power plants fell by 92% over the past 12 months. And at the same time, the price or the cost for solar and batteries is now much lower than the cost for the equivalent coal power plant or the equivalent coal sector prices. Meaning, renewables are actually much cheaper in China to build than any other form of energy, and that includes nuclear. Over the past decade, China's CO2 emissions from fossil fuels and cement have risen by nearly one-fifth. But there's been ups and downs along the way. The shallow decline in 2015 and 2016 was due to a slump that followed a round of stimulus measures, while zero COVID controls caused a sharper fall in 2022. Overall, however, emissions have continued to increase, pausing only during periods of economic stress until recently. Recently, there's been signs that China's CO2 emissions, uh, while well, they've already hit their peak, and we are looking now at a period of structural decline. The latest data for the first quarter of 2025 shows that China's CO2 emissions have now been stable and falling for more than a year, as shown in this chart. However, with emissions remaining just 1% below the recent peak, they could hit a record high again. But considering the fact that the country is moving away from fossil fuels to electric cars and renewable energy, that seems extremely unlikely. The future path of China's CO2 emissions hangs in the balance, though, depending on trends within each sector of its economy, as well as China's response to Trump's tariffs. These sectoral trends, though, are clearly headlined by the fact that China's government does not want fossil fuels, does not want any kind of dependence on foreign energy in any way whatsoever. The reduction in China's first quarter CO2 emissions in 2025 was due to a 5.8% drop in the power sector. In other words, emissions in the power sector are declining rapidly. Power demand grew by 2.5% and emissions went down by 6%. There was a 4.7% drop in thermal power generation, meaning coal and gas. So the narrative that the media is spreading, that China is building out more coal power plants and its emissions are growing, is actually, is actually completely false. For there to be a 5% drop in emissions from coal and gas, obviously the amount of coal and gas being used has to have declined. Increases in solar, wind and nuclear power generation, particularly in solar, have been able to cover for the growth in demand. The increase in hydropower, which is more related to seasonal variation, helped push down fossil power generation. Power sector emissions fell by more than total generation from fossil fuels as the share of biomass and gas increased, while average coal power plant efficiency also improved. Well, actually, it's not really accurate. The truth is coal power plants are simply being turned off during the day. And therefore, that's one of the reasons why there's less emissions. Why are they turned off during the day? Well, there is far more solar than is needed at some points of the day. So they have to be. The average amount of coal needed to generate each unit of electricity at coal-fired power plants fell by 0.9% as well last year. The first quarter reduction in CO2 emissions from coal use in the power sector is clearly evident and is a long-term structural trend. Outside of the power sector, emissions increased 3.5%, with the largest rises in the use of coal in the metals and chemicals industries. So manufacturing is using coal. What for? Specifically, to make steel. The coal to chemicals industry is undergoing rapid expansion, driven by concerns about dependence on imported oil and gas. During the first quarter of 2025, it was also benefiting from more favorable economics due to lower coal prices and relatively high oil prices. Crude steel production increased 0.6% year on year. Metal products output by 6% and non-ferrous metals production by 2%. All of these increases were mainly due to a jump in March. All of these increases were mainly due to a jump in March. Metals demand was boosted by the bump in exports ahead of the tariffs in the United States. But high output has continued well into April. Real estate construction starts fell by 24% and sales of new properties by 3%, indicating that demand for cement, steel and glass from the construction sector is going to continue to decline. 
In contrast, economic output in vehicle and machinery production increased by 12% and 13% respectively, signaling increased demand for metals. Cement production fell by 1.4%, a slower rate of decrease than in previous years. Gas consumption increased by an estimated 6% in the power sector due to a 14% increase in gas-fired power generation capacity. Oil products consumption increased slightly. As shown by the bar here, warmer weather meant that weather-dependent construction and agricultural activity rose earlier in the year than usual. But structural factors, particularly vehicle electrification and the shift to liquefied natural gas in the freight sector, contributed to decline in demand for oil. So, have China's emissions peaked? Well, following the 1.6% decline in the first quarter of 2025, China's emissions have been stable or falling for more than a year. Emissions in the 12 months to the end of March 2025 were down 1%, but that number would have been much higher if demand for electricity hadn't have grown so substantially during that period of time. Importantly, the growth in clean power generation in the first quarter of 2025 was not only larger than the rise in demand overall, it was also higher than the average increase in demand over the past 15 years, marked by the dashed line. Moreover, hydropower has been stable, so that hasn't really contributed to it, to the change in China's emissions very much. Neither has nuclear power capacity, which has barely been altered. Why? Why is China not building out more nuclear power plants? Well, it's building a couple, but nowhere near what it actually planned on 10 years ago. And the reason comes down to one thing, money. Cost. Nuclear is very expensive in comparison to solar and batteries. In fact, by some estimates, between four to six times more expensive. Looking beyond electricity generation, all sectors in China registered a fall in emissions over the most recent four months from December 2024 to March 2025, except for coal to chemicals. In order for China's emissions overall to peak and then decline, CO2 cuts in declining sectors will need to outweigh continued growth elsewhere. It's worth noting as well that oil consumption has been declining since the post-COVID rebound ended in March 2024, falling 2% from its peak. The long-term trend is expected to be downwards due to the electrification of transportation, trucking, uh, all vehicles, despite rising demand for chemicals and aviation. Gas use has been falling as well. In addition, for oil products consumption and steel production, industry projections indicate that the future trend is likely to be falling. For the power sector, clean energy additions at or above current levels will lead to a structural peak as clean energy growth will more than cover electricity demand growth. Together, these sectors cover more than 80% of China's total emissions. If all of them enter a structural decline, which it appears they have, then total emissions will do so as well. So what's China doing about the Trump administration and its tariffs? Well, China's response includes focusing on producing things itself. The concept includes the clean energy industry, which has become such an important economic driver in China that it will be hard to leave out of any plans in the future. A new list of low carbon demonstration projects published by the National Development and Reform Commission provides a look at China's priorities, says, says the progress playbook for clean energy investment. Green hydrogen, energy storage, virtual power plants, and industrial decarbonization based on hydrogen are potential new growth areas as well. In terms of the emissions implications of China's response to Trump's tariffs, the big question is whether stimulus focused at these favored sectors, including the new low carbon focus areas and other clean energy industries is enough. Some traditional recipients of stimulus spending, such as shipbuilding and public infrastructure, have already posted strong growth in the first quarter of this year as a result of stimulus measures announced last year. The National Energy Administration in China is targeting more than 200 gigawatts per year of clean energy capacity being added to the grid, which is lower than the 350 gigawatts added last year, but clearly shows a massive focus on renewable energy. In addition to solar, wind, and batteries, China's nuclear construction is accelerating, but at a slower pace than what was previously predicted. With another 10 gigawatts of reactor projects approved in April, on top of 10 gigawatt approved in each of the previous two years. 
These projects will contribute fairly minimally to clean power supply towards 2030 as they're actually completed. So what does this mean for 2025 and beyond? The Progress Playbook says that the past 12 months mark a significant turning point in China for their CO2 emissions, with clean energy growth for the first time outpacing demand growth and displacing fossil fuel use in the power sector. This is huge. This is unquestionably a game-changing pivot point for the history of China being the growth engine of the world. Record-breaking clean energy additions expected in 2025, despite new pricing policy uncertainties, show that trend will continue this year. Now, right now, a lot of people think to themselves, well, you know, I have this mobile phone. It was made in China using fossil fuels, unfortunately, burning coal. That's unfortunate. That will change though. And people will soon come to see that within 10 years time, the majority of manufacturing in China will be actually driven through renewable energy projects. The longer term trajectory though depends heavily on the targets set in the upcoming five year plan and on the economic policy response to US tariffs and potential other economic headwinds. Sector by sector analysis shows that in addition to the power sector, emissions have peaked in the building materials and steel sectors as well as oil products consumption. From here, the trend is only one way, down. Those sectors together represent over 80% of China's fossil fuel related CO2 emissions. However, these uncertainty, there are uncertainties and potential for short-term rebound in these sectors. That does seem quite unlikely though. All of this shows that it is very likely that China's emissions will continue to fall and the country will, will achieve substantial absolute emissions reductions over the next five years. Ultimately, what this means is, unfortunately, we are still as a planet producing way too many emissions than what we should be. But those numbers, I believe, are beginning to decline and things will look substantially better in five years from now. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Mm -hmm.